Hey guys. I recently cleared uh, Storm's Crown Extreme today with my static. I just wanted to give some commentary and maybe do like a loose guide to help other people Tank get their busters. clear here. And during that bullshit, we stay spread. So and I'm just going to walk through the fight and out? describe what we did and oh. hopefully this will help people understand it a bit more. I'm not going to go over every single thing and in depth. It's going to be pretty fast paced. So something to maybe combine with some strats that your uh, pugs are using since you're not going to have this isn't going to give you strats and it's not going to give you every tiny bit of information but you, if you're if you're decent you should be able to garner a lot from this hopefully um besides raid wides and tank busters i'm going to describe everything though uh the most confusing part of this whole fight is the beginning because she does Two sets of three mechanics. She does a sword throw mechanic. You can see she's got like a baseball bat stance there. Then she does a sword retrieve mechanic. Um, and then she does a stack or a spread at the same time. Uh, you have to look at her animation to see what she's doing for each one. So you can see she's all on her, she's on her knees here. That means she's charging the wall and cleaving behind her. So that entire first part of the fight was the first set of mechanics that she can do. I'll show you again real quick here. She's got this baseball as if she's uh, about to swing a baseball bat. That means she's cleaving in front and behind her. Um, and then her sword retrieve, she's on her, she's all on the ground. She jumps to the wall. If you see her do any one of these, just take note of it because she's always going to do the three mechanics that she did not do when she gets to the second set. So she's always going to do the three she didn't do. So this time she's calm and standing there with her sword. That's always a dynamo or a donut shape. Her retrieve is also going to be a dynamo on this pull because she she already did the jump to the wall one. You can see she's floating here. That's the tell for the dynamo uh, for her sword retrieve mechanic. And then it's going to be stacks because she did spread. So she always alternates what she's doing. One thing I think confused us in this fight is she has two different dynamos. Um that are attached to two different mechanics and the whole opener is rng of how she does that she could go she could start with dynamo dynamo spread dynamo dynamo stack she could do uh cleave wall spread cleave wall stack cleave dynamo stack so you just have to pay attention to what she did first um and just remember that uh she's not going to repeat that the rest of the fight is easier to explain so i probably won't need to pause for any other parts People just get sucked into twos here. If you have a circle, we just had them go to two and four. They should be leaning all the way to two and four, kind of back away from the boss. And uh, everyone that has nothing here goes toward one and three. Uh, I, that was a wipe. I didn't mean to include that, but that's okay. Go to, this is actually good because now I can just show you the, how a different opener would go. So see, in this opener, she's doing dynamo as her sword throw mechanic. And that's going to be dynamo again because she's jumping in the air and it's into a spread. Which means because she did dynamo for a sword throw, dynamo for a sword retrieve, or donut, however you want to say it, that means I already know she's going to do uh, a cleave here and then she's going to jump to the wall and do stacks. So if you can memorize this stuff, um, it's pretty easy. Just confusing if you don't know that and you're trying to look for it every single time. It's kind of annoying to do the fight. It's easier to already know what's coming up before it happens. Let me skip to the part where we wiped. Uh, we wiped here. Let me go back here. So these enumerations on the first set, you just put them at one and three. If you have an enumeration that's one of those blue things or nothing, just go to the nearest one or three marker. Put a one northeast and a three southwest. Uh, meet up there. Circles go two four. You could do it the other way around. This probably good. That's probably going to be done any which way in a pug, depending on what region you're on. Um, and then right after the enumeration, she does protean, which is just a stay spread apart. So after you take them, just get away from each other a little bit. This face change takes kind of forever, and it does a little bit of damage, so make sure you have some mid-up for it. Uh, 
I love her voice. She has a really good voice. Uh, if you haven't done it, you should listen to this character in Japanese, French, and German as well. Uh, these tethers only ever target one roll at a time. I'm playing really messy here, but basically you stay in melee range so she doesn't jump all over the place. As soon as she kicks you, just move to the side. There's a shared buster there. We're preparing to go mid here, right after that buster. Everyone stacks mid, and everyone's going to spread into a defined position after these AoEs are baited here. My position is the D marker, so I just run straight to it. It's very important you don't spread there until after that uh, the markers appear. For this, we just had DPS rotate clockwise. We have DPS on inner cards and tanks healers on cardinals as a default. So it makes stuff like that easy. You can see every time someone gets kicked, they they move because you don't you want to dodge the AOE that she actually beams at you. You can probably cheese this with I like cheesing this with Liturgy of the Bell on White Mage. You probably cheese it with every healer though. Uh, we stack at four here northwest and go clockwise. So that we end up south. We take the st the party stack south, and the tanks just go northwest northeast. You just get knocked from the middle and then just walk to the wall and wait on the wall just to be safe. There's no need to greed. Because if a tank greeds there, if they go for, if they go back in for a GCD early, it can wipe the party with their flares. Oh, this phase we did DPS go clockwise. Just to simplify it. Because this is always in pairs of uh, a DPS and a non-DPS. This is tricky because these AoE spawn like Ramu. They never spawn on you, they spawn roughly around you. Um, and something that really helps is your tether timer here is at zero when the enumeration goes off. Um, we, I was dying trying to get to the enumeration and waiting there way too long. If you just uh, chill out for a while there, you can use your tether timer. The little hair timer, whatever that thing is. Uh, you can just use that as a countdown for how long you have until you need to get to your enumeration partner. I'm probably using some terms in this uh, video that some of you guys might not understand, but enumeration is basically a stack with a defined amount of people that have to be in it. Uh, for this we did... You can actually see it in the chat down here, but we did uh, X northeast, square southeast, circle southwest, triangle northwest, and we just put it in the chat. And you just pair up as soon as you see them. That way you're already where you need to be. Um, and if this is randomly enumeration or protean here, the reason you pair up on the inner cardinals is because she always cleaves the cardinals here. Um, and this is either going to be enumeration or protean. What you're looking at here is a protean. And it hits right there. So that's why we need to be spread. Again, we just do DPS, go clockwise. She's kind of doing what she did in her opener again here. So you just want to get used to her doing that. It's the same as the opener. That's why I spent longer explaining it. Because you really want to know. Because she did a overhead cleave. Then she dashed the wall and did stacks. So if you know how the opener works, you already know she's going to do a dynamo, dynamo spread later. But she's not going to do that yet. She's going to go into another, the other set of shapes that we talked about. She's going to go into shapes with enumerations. Enumeration. Shapes is next. You can maybe hear me calling it out to them. It's important to pay attention to what she's done so you know what she's going to do next. Because it alternates every pull. You don't know what the first thing is she's going to do. I got a little lost here. Or no, my partner got lost. So we know this is enumerations already. This is a little tricky. They can spawn here and here. They can or can, they can spawn like this. They spawn here and here. We just had the we just had the groups without the enumerations go clockwise. So you can see they go clockwise, and we just paired DPS to DPS, and tanks and healers to tanks and healers. So you can see there's a tank on me here. There's a DPS on that DPS. If they spawn like this. You might need to define a way to do that. Because you can see there's one here and here. If they spawn like this, like we were having like...
both the groups come to us like this. We were having, we were kind of like meeting along a line here. But uh, you might want to define that. We didn't. We don't like our people with enumerations moving around because that can lead to disaster very fast. Um. But yeah, I'm sure there's different pugs that'll do it different ways. But we would just meet like, we would just walk to each other basically. It's not that hard. I went back and found a poll where we had the weird pattern of enumerations, so you can watch it and maybe get an idea of what you do with it. We just walk at each other, like just walk at each other, Lambo. You're really slow, so you, it's kind of good to walk at each other. Just be careful. This was before we started pairing DPS with DPS and tank healers with tank healers, so just keep that in mind. Now, if you remember the other thing she did, um, I said she was going to do dynamo, dynamo into spread here. It's why you want to pay attention to what she does. I even typed it in the chat. On this poll, actually, I typed it in the chat. I typed uh, dine, dine, spread, just so that I wouldn't forget, because... It helps if you're pugging, especially, and you can type while you play. Like if you play Brain Dead on a White Mage or a Warrior, you can, you can literally type <laughs> to people what's gonna come up. It's the same as before. She just uh, it's Busters raid wide, and then she just takes a million years to transition. I'll tell you right now, she has five phases in this fight, but I believe we kill her on the fourth phase in this clear. The fifth phase, that phase you just saw, she repeats at the end. I believe it's all the same with the shapes and all that stuff. I believe that's her fifth phase. This is her fourth phase and she's going to die soon. Um, but there's some really important mechanics that you want to pay attention to here because we couldn't clear until we actually learned this phase. So we stack south together. You're either going to go cl uh, clockwise in some groups. I imagine most pugs will just go clockwise. You want to count four AoEs. You want to stay stacked and drop the. make sure the fourth AoE is not in the center. Then go center. Very important you do it like that. Then you do it what you did earlier where you bait everything mid and then go out. She's going to start kicking at the same time. This is a knockback into spread. You want to stay spread for this phase here until the tanks get busted. Because there's a million AoEs dropping on people. You can see they're not dropping on me, they're dropping near me, which is like E5S. It's like there's a grid and they only drop on that grid. This is a very important part that I mess up. Right here, it <laughs> right here is a um two tank flares into a party stack. There's a bunch of dodging. There's no knockback attached to it. Sorry, I had to find a VOD that was more scuffed so I could show you this part. So remember, after all these dashes go off. That's when your party needs go. to be pre-positioned pre uh, here for the stack. Should already have six people here. Sit on the wall for so after the tornado Thank part, you. you can already be pre-positioning here. And the tanks need to already be pre-positioned uh, northwest and northeast. And I get to uh, maybe show you a bit of this last phase here. She just re basically restarts her fifth, uh, her, her third phase is a copy of her fifth phase. I don't know if you'll see the enumeration on this poll. No. Okay, it's fine, though. You get the idea. I encourage everyone to look through guides. Not guides, but get a feel for your data center's um, strats. Because every data center is going to be different. Every server is going to be different. If you're on EU or JP, you should be looking at macros and figuring out what they're doing in there. If you're on NA, you might just want to ask. I don't know how much is going to get yellowed on NA or how much uh, pugs are going to yellow this fight. But um, you should be able to do this with the information I've given you, and you just need to figure out in what way they're uh, doing these strats. So good luck.